Okay, hello everybody. Um, so now I'm back, I'm in the full swing of things. Uh, lots of stuff going on and uh, I know it hasn't actually translated into the, to the videos that I'm posting because there's a lot of things pending. Uh, but some of them are coming full circle. I'll be posting really soon. So uh, I'll be uh, glad to share that stuff with you. So today I got a lot going on and uh, I think I mentioned earlier that one of the really important projects here is to get the elevator running. And uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, first of all, we have all the stuff that's upstairs that we need to get out. Uh, and there's also uh, that set of beams that need to be repaired. And we're gonna have to get some kind of a materials handler up there because those beams are really heavy. So uh, in order to continue with the renovation, we definitely need the elevator working. And so many people have, uh, inquired about it because uh, I think it's uh, interesting for a lot of people and probably it's the number one uh, kind of requested thing for uh, information on the channel. So uh, this is currently the three phase that comes into the building and we need to connect uh, three phase to get the elevator running. So uh, we already have a three phase service connected to the building. This is the panel that it used to uh, run on. And these, uh, just to show you a little bit of scale, it's giant and uh, probably needless to say, we're not gonna be able to use this. We're gonna have to install new updated uh, uh, panel and uh, run it you know, completely new all the way up to the elevator. So uh, spoke with the city, spoke with uh, the electric service provider and uh, it's all green lights. So we're gonna be, hope, you know, I'm hoping to, to get busy on that first thing this spring. Uh, but in the meantime, I need to figure out about running number eight wire to the elevator shaft. So I need to calculate the distance, both for conduit and for the wire that's going to go to the elevator shaft. So I'm going to do that today. Uh, so if you guys remember my friend Bob, who I met through this channel, uh, he was here this fall and we did some power washing around the building and uh, we were able to move some of this gorgeous old furniture in here and uh, he taught me how to do window glazing so uh, thanks to him I'm able to slowly keep attacking all of these uh, broken and missing windows so uh, that being said I have a bunch of stuff out in the other room and it's all of the uh, stuff that I've been collecting that is of interest to me, kind of real uh, industrial type stuff. And uh, I need to move it into that room because I want to empty this uh, entire bay out because I still want to keep moving toward doing the auction and getting all the stuff out of the building. So uh, I'm gonna finally break down and hire some help. <laughs> and uh, what we're gonna do is Go to the second floor where a lot of stuff is stored. We're going to uh, bring all that down here and line this bay because uh, I've talked about this before, but uh, the, the sheer volume of stuff will not allow me to start like staging stuff outside because it would take months to do and then it would rain and then just, just all kinds of uh, problems. So uh, I thought about auctioning, I, I talked about it on the channel before, I thought about auctioning everything as a single lot and then a lot of people spoke up and said, probably not the best idea. So uh, I've got this long bay and then uh, just past that door right there, there's the elevator space and then another long bay, which is uh, like 110 feet long. And so I think, if I can get this stuff out of here and that stuff out of here, uh, I can just bring everything down and this entire bay. And then what I'd like to do is uh, apply for a permit from the city or uh, get a waiver uh, to be able to have that auction, maybe over a couple weekends. Uh, so there's really no danger because there's so many over had doors there are so many doors all around it's easy to get out of the building if anything happened or whatever so uh plus there's no electric in the building um 
So I'm thinking that they probably would allow me to do that because the end goal is to actually get the fire load out of the building, get all the stuff out of the building and uh, take that giant step forward in uh, saving the place. So uh, I haven't talked to them. Maybe some of them are watching the video at this point. Uh, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, so going to move all that antique stuff into that other room and start clearing this out. And I've been posting several videos about going room by room and cleaning stuff out, uh, getting it out of here. So uh, there used to be a drop ceiling in here and I've pulled all of those uh, fiberglass panels out. Um, during this trip, while I'm here, ugh, I'm afraid to say, I, I'm always afraid uh, to mention what my goals are on the channel because then I'm kind of obligated. And uh, a lot of times things don't go as quickly as I had hoped. And, uh, but anyway, one of the things that I'd like to do uh, on this trip while I'm here is to clear out this entire room, get all of this HVAC out, get this entire drop ceiling out. Um, I think it would be a little bit ambitious for me to also add on removing that paneling all the way down because I did that over here. This was all paneled. Um, you can see a bunch of the uh, remainder of that that still needs to be tidied up. Uh, but pulling that paneling off because it, it was, uh, they fastened it to the brick was a lot harder than I originally expected. So, uh, the goal that I'm setting for myself is to clear out this entire space and get all this stuff out of the ceiling. Um, and then I'll have a really nice open, clean space in here, which will be uh, a, a gigantic step forward. Um, I don't know if I'll get to it or not. This trip, I have this giant pile of wood here and a giant pile of wood and cardboard in there. And uh, I have a place, it's all just clean wood. It's not even painted. So uh, I might just take it out and have a gigantic bonfire that you know, has flames up 75 feet in the air. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'll be a video on its own. So, uh, okay, so let's... Uh, Let's get to it. Uh, Bob is actually coming back soon. I'm, I'm really excited to see him because we, uh, we made fast friends and he's a really great guy. Uh, he's coming back and thanks to him, we have all this lighting in here and you can actually see. Uh, what I wanna do is look inside this elevator shaft and see uh, where and how I can get that three phase electric up to uh, the elevator motor. So, and what I'm hoping to do is use existing conduit. So, uh, ah, and it looks like we have it. Yes, that is great. So here is a, uh, I can't see it. Maybe you can see it if I, you see that uh, conduit running up right there. So that goes from the ground floor all the way to the, to the motor up there. I bet it's full of copper wire. So, uh, if it is, it's from the early 1900s, so uh, I know there's a school of thought that if it hasn't been molested inside the, uh, the conduit, that it's probably okay, but uh, I think that's a, uh, a decision or a topic that's above my pay grade. So likely, I'm guessing, we'll just have to run brand new uh, number eight copper wire up there. Uh, so the wire, I think, I just looked at Home Depot, um, probably will try to source the wire here locally from uh, a supplier here in town. Uh, I think it comes in 125 foot rolls because they're a smaller company and not a big box store. They might just be able to do it by the running feet and I can pick a custom number of feet, which would be great. Uh, but that vertical shot from the ground floor to the elevator shaft just that vertical space is about 40 feet. So, uh, and that copper wire, especially at that gauge, is not cheap. So, uh, once it gets down to the bottom, I'm already at, let's say, 50 feet, and then I have to measure uh, from the place that it enters the building. Uh, and please know that anything I say right now, just talking about this, I am completely and 100% uneducated, and I am ignorant about all of this stuff. So. Uh, I was thinking, oh, look at all that awesome conduit there. Maybe I can use that. 
uh, and then somebody who knows might come on and say, you can't use it because, for example, you have to use threaded or it has to be rigid or it has to be, you know, and I don't know, but there is some pretty awesome uh, conduit and there is iron, very rigid going there. It doesn't go all the way down, uh, but there's a lot of that in the building. Uh, there's more modern conduit, which goes basically all the way down to where it comes into the building. And then there's some kind of like semi-rigid conduit, which is heavier than the modern stuff, but not super heavy and rigid. But it looks like every, uh, let's say five feet is an electrical outlet. So that may prevent me from using it. I don't know. Don't know. But if it's possible, I would love to uh, be able to use the existing infrastructure that's in here. So uh, there's also this extremely heavy steel sprinkler pipe. I don't know if that could be used as conduit or not. So it's going to be uh, really interesting to talk with the uh, licensed electrician. Uh, and you know who you are, you're probably watching this video. So uh, I'm expecting him to stop by here pretty soon. Uh, in the next few days and uh, he can fill me in on exactly what we need to do. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated. And uh, right now I just need to do the measurements to see how far it takes to get to that elevator shaft and then add 50 feet for the vertical rise. Uh, so it was pretty easy map to do because they're uh, on center between the posts is 18 feet. And then it was easy just to count how many posts there were. Uh, and uh, this length over to the elevator shaft plus the, let's say, 50 feet up brings us to 220 feet, uh, which will comfortably sit within uh, two complete rolls. This thing does not want to open all the way up. Something is not hinging right or operating the way it should. I, I see this thing here should be like this brace that's right there and it should be exactly in that position. But I don't think, I think it's just support. I don't think that should affect the way it opens up. Uh, I could spend three or four hours working on that, trying to figure it out but uh, I prefer to just keep moving. Turned it over, still doesn't wanna go, so I don't know. Okay, so I don't know what it was. I was yanking as hard as I could. Something exploded, it popped, and it looks like it flattened out. I don't know what was holding. Whatever it was gave way. So now the only question is, did I break it? When I turn it over, we'll see if it actually functions like a table. So, okay, um, and I can see right now that there is a problem. <laughs> Those middle legs are way too high for the rest of the table. Yikes, okay. <laughs>
It looks like it's lost some of its fold-up functionality. To what degree, I don't know. But it's solid now. So I have a horizontal surface that I can actually put stuff on. So, man, I'm out of breath. <sighs> okay. Getting old. Uh, so on second thought, what I'd really like to do is uh, clean all these seats. They've got like bird droppings and all kinds of stuff all over them. Uh, go back and knock all the rust off of those steel bars. Uh, and then pop these tabletops off and make new tabletop for it. So just as a long single piece. Uh, it still has the casters, so it will roll. Uh, it just has lost the functionality of folding up because that piece came off. So, but uh, for me in this room, I mean, look at the color of those seats versus the color of the wall. Uh, <laughs> couldn't ask for a better color than that. Uh, and depending on what I do for the uh, surface here, this can look pretty good in here. But uh, yeah, I just need it to put stuff on, so. Uh, yeah, back to it. Next items. Oh man, there's so much here, I don't even know where to start. So, uh, I think I'll start in this back corner here. Uh, someday it won't be the case anymore, but one of the uh, worst headaches at the moment is just the sheer amount of dust in this building. So this was all cleaned off when I set it up over in the other room. And uh, 90 days later, it's just covered in soot. So uh, it's a constant battle. Uh, so those look pretty good there, if I do say so myself. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't, I, Probably my weakness in this whole endeavor is staging antiques. So I, I don't know how to stage and stuff. I just know the actual objects that I like. And uh, yeah, so that's like about two trips back and forth out of a thousand. and narrow so I'm just gonna take it very slow That is a tight fit. Uh, I think I could maybe get another inch. I can scoot it over here or not. Yeah, one inch. Uh, famous scooch. 
uh, on second thought, it's just a little too tight. So I think I'm gonna move it over here instead. Okay, it's a pretty good place for it, I think. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break and just get all this nonsense out of here because it's starting to uh, irritate me. Uh, okay, so there's these giant windows and it looks pretty bright in here, but it's about 3.30 p.m. Uh, in the middle of February in the Midwest, which means in about 30 minutes, it's gonna be completely dark in here. So uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day for now. And uh, I will continue this in the next video. Uh, but before we go, let me share something with you. As soon as all that stuff is in there, then the process of this room starts and we're gonna clear everything out of here. So uh, that's stage two. And then finally, uh, this epic adventure here will happen. So, uh, yeah, a lot of work cut out for me on this trip, but uh, stay tuned. Uh, and when all that's done, it's going to come together. So uh, that'll be, I would say, ground floor, about over 50% completely cleared out. So uh, that's a hallmark moment. So, okay, I'll see you guys next time. And uh, leave me a comment. Let's uh, have some conversation. All right, talk to you later.